Hello everyone, it's Shannon here. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, we are going to create a really fun interactive card with Waffle Flowers' new Winter Hamster stamp set. We're going to create a really fun action that's a slide kind of pivot with a pull tab. It's really cool and I can't wait to show you. First, let's take a look at this Winter Hamster stamp set. This stamp set is really cleverly designed. The stamps of the hamsters are grouped together and it's actually you get two a grouping of three hamsters in one big stamp and that allows you to stamp a lot of the images quickly and then you have a matching die that you see me holding here that fits right over so you can cut out those hamsters very quickly there even is one for the top big stamp of hamsters top trio of hamsters which is the killers the one we're going to use today and as you can see the die even cuts out all those little like snowflake and music notes so this is a great time saver i really think this is a brilliant idea so here's the card we're creating today you can see our little trio of caroling hamsters and then we pull the pull tab they kind of sway to the right and then you push the tab back in and they move back to the center and it's just a really fun action I think a really fun movement that works really well with this caroling um, theme so I think it's really fun and I want to show you guys how I created it because it's actually pretty easy I'm gonna start by grabbing that first trio of carolers that again is one big stamp so it has three little hamsters as well as some extra like snowflakes and music notes and things like that it's all on one stamp so I just quickly stamped it in memento tuxedo black onto some white cardstock and now I'm going to Copic color my images in the Copic markers I'm using are on screen so you can follow along I'm starting with this first hamster in the center I'm going to use some creams for him starting with my lightest which was E50 then I added a shadow with E21 just to kind of create some shape to this guy and then blend out with E50 that transition between E21 to E50 just really simple Copic coloring now I have G000 and I use that for my whites I'm going to do a little shadow right at the bottom of his chin because I'm going to have his chin basically be white and then then I add a little bit to the trim of the hat and as well to the music book. Now moving on to greens. So I'm starting to color their clothes now, or at least this little hamster guy's clothes. And this is where I'm kind of introducing my kind of core palette colors. My um, browns and creams that I'm going to use for the hamsters are my neutrals. But these core colors, I usually stick with a rule of three. So I just have three colors for my core palette. And my colors for this are red blue and green. I just have a grouping of markers picked out for those so I get a nice gradation. And I like to stick to that rule of three because I've made mistakes in the past when I've colored things and, and introduced too many colors and it just looks messy. So I've, I've found from me when I make my pick out my colors for my images, I try to keep it simple and not do more than three um, core colors. So now I'm coloring this other little hamster guy. I introduced the browns on him first, which was E21 for my light and then E33 for my dark. And then I'm going back to the creams to color his face and his tummy. Now moving on to his little sweater and I've got my blues now and I am just coloring that sweater really quickly. Very, very simple. And then I'll grab my greens for his uh, scarf. And I try to get a little bit of each one of my core colors on my hamsters but it didn't quite work out but I still think it worked really balanced. So I went ahead and die cut these hamsters out once I finished coloring them with the matching die and as you can see the die cuts out the extra kind of snowflakes and, and music notes as well which again I think is just a really brilliant design. So now we're going to move on to kind of creating, start to create our background and pull tab for our interactive card. I'm going to start actually by ink blending a background with tumbled gloss distress oxide. I'm blending on an A2 panel of 110 pound white cardstock and I also have a pull tab at the top there that's also made out of 110 pound white cardstock and that pull tab is four and a quarter by a little bit less than an inch. It doesn't have to be, you can make it wider or thinner but probably for this you want it wider because that gives you a little bit more um, wiggle room for where you place kind of the opening for your um, for where your hamster is attached to the pull tab. So I just did some really quick ink blending on both the pull tab and the panel. That's I blend on the pull tab because when you pull it um, and the hamsters move to the side, you can actually see the pull tab a little bit and this just hides it a little bit better. Now I'm going to add some snowflakes. I'm using Tumble Glass Distress ink now 
And these snowflakes are also from the Winter Hamsters stamp set. I'm just going to create a nice little background as well. And I do stamp a few of the snowflakes on the pull tab as well. Just again, makes it kind of hides it a little bit, camouflages it a little bit, makes it blend into the background. Now I'm going to grab my hamsters. I'm going to arrange them where I basically want them to go and then kind of take a look and see if I need to add a little, a few more snowflakes, which I decided I do need to add a little bit more snowflakes here and there. So I stamp those real quick and that will actually complete my background. I'm now going to stamp my sentiment. So again, I position my hamsters where I want them to go and then grab a sentiment from the winter hamsters stamp set. And then I'm just going to stamp it in momental tuxedo black with my misty just to make sure I don't make any mistakes here. So now I'm going to cut a little notch here in my front panel. I'm just using a small circle die from Waffle Flowers um, nesting circles die set and just cut that little notch, just position that circle kind of halfway on the panel and then ran it through my die cutting machine. Now I've grabbed this little sketchbook die from Waffle Flowers little artist stamp set. So this um, little sketchbook shape was just the perfect shape for my hamsters. It was the perfect size and shape. I wanted something a little bit rectangular and um, it also needed to be small enough to kind of hide and fit behind their heads because I didn't want, I, I don't like it when my interactions are visible. So if I can, if I can make it kind of hidden, I will do it. So I am just die cutting this little window or this little sketchbook rectangle behind their heads, kind of positioning the hamsters on my background so I can figure out where that die needs to go and then grabbing a little piece of micropore tape to hold it in place and run it through. It is important to note that these little windows need to be within the span of your pull tab. So my pull tab is a little bit like a little bit less than an inch. I can't have those windows to very much more than an inch. So I just showed three brads. You need brads to make this kind of pivot pull tab motion. Brads are what is what gonna kind of allow your feet or the bottom of your hamsters to be kind of a little bit more stationary but still allow them to move and it's what creates that swaying motion. So I just grabbed my hole punch and punched a couple holes. I couldn't punch a hole in the very center underneath that center window for my center hamster because my um, you can't reach that far with the hole punch. So I just poked a hole with a needle and then I'm now widening all three holes with an X-Acto knife just to make them a little bit bigger. I want that brad to be able to spin and move freely. I don't want it to get caught in anything. And also when I fan out the back of the brad, um, I don't do it super tight. You know how sometimes you can kind of really fan those out, really have it very tight with the paper. I try as best as I can to kind of keep it loose so that brad again moves freely. I don't want it, I just want it a nice easy mo movement so these hamsters just um, sway perfectly. So after I got all three brads in, I'm now going to move on to kind of putting my pull tab together. So I've grabbed my pull tab here and I'm going to position it. And as you can see, that pull tab goes completely behind those three window openings. You can't see the opening anymore. Then I've cut a couple, these are half inch by two inch strips of card, cardstock. These are just going, I'm just using these to kind of hold that pull tab in place because this is all going to be popped up with some foam tape and that this just makes sure that pull tab isn't kind of like loosey and free. It just really keeps everything nice and tight. So again, I just use a little glue at the top and bottom of those strips and that just holds that pull tab in place so it doesn't kind of move around all over the place in the back side of the card. I'm now going to add some craft foam to the back side of my panel. This craft foam is necessary because of the brads. You need some dimension here so those brads can move because this panel can't be glued tightly to the card base because that won't allow, that won't give the space for these brads to move. And I am careful where I place this craft foam. Oh, I don't cover the pull tab at all or, and leave a nice little good a border or open space for those brads to move as well. Now that I have my craft foam on my panel, I'm going to add some glue and glue it down onto my card base. Now I'm going to cut some foam tape here and double it up. Now I'm cutting a very teeny tiny little square here and doubling it up because 
I, I have that thickness of my brads. And I also want to note here, it's really important. I'm putting these little doubled up pieces of foam tape to the right most side of my opening. This has to be way over there. So you, when you pull that pull tab, you get the most movement. If you put it in the center, you're only going to get a very little movement. So the rightmost side of that window of each one of those three windows. Now I'm moving on to adding some adhesive to these brads because I need to attach the hamsters to the brads as well. And I found these glue dots worked so well for this these are the mini ones so they're small and they're they work, fit perfectly on these brads so i just put a glue dot on each one of these brads here and now that i have bra uh, glue dots on those i can now remove the backing on my doubled up foam tape and pop on my hamsters and you just want to make sure when you put these guys down that you are careful to cover up the brad and cover up as best you can that opening and foam tape as well so this interaction or basically the mechanics of this is well hidden so the recipient is really surprised when they pull that pull tab. Now let's give that pull tab a pull and see these hamsters sway. I love this movement. I think it works really well with these caroling hamsters and the brad is a perfect solution to kind of keep the base of the hamsters kind of stationary but allowing them to kind of pivot with that pull tab and really create that sway motion. I hope you guys enjoyed today's card and video. If you want any more information on the products I used, please check out the links below. And if you like this video, I would so love for you to subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram or check out my blog. I'll share those links in the description as well. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.